All right, it's Saturday morning. It's along about 8.45. Let's do a little temperature check. Let me take my glasses off so I can see. 46 degrees. And what we're going to do today is I got to get this body out of here <clears throat> so that I can work on the chassis. And I've gotten quite a mess in here. I got to clean up. Look at my bench. I had it so nice. Now it's such a mess. And uh, that's just the way it is, though. Um, so follow along as we do that. I think Mrs. Heavy Chevy is going to brave the frigid temps and come out and help me. What you looking for? Gloves. You're so pretty. There ain't no telling. Thanks. Where they might be, though. I don't know. I can't pay attention at all to nothing here. All right, we got to push this body, or the, I mean the frame out. See, I can't even talk. You see what happens? <laughs> we got to push this frame out and uh, get it out of the way so that we can do my other maneuver to get the body out. You gonna crank this truck for us? Sure. Ooh. Nasty old truck as it is. What? This is gonna be a Carolina cold start by Mrs. Heavy Chevy. <laughs> yeah. I should get lots of views. Gotta pump this. No, one. no, 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 no. Don't pump the gas. Go ahead. No problem. This thing starts good in cold weather. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'll drive it out and back it up to the garage. Shut it off so we can hear. Somebody did a real butcher hack job here. I think I'm going to weld a little strap right on top just so it don't break. I'm going to do that right quick. Oh yeah, that'd be good. And then, uh, then we'll do our other endeavor. You want to try stick welding it? Uh, I've never stick welded, but I can try it. It's just a rod. Yeah. I've lost the GoPro, and I can't believe I lost it. What? She said she can believe it. I can. I don't know. She's spitting to try a little stick weld, and let's see how she does. First time ever. Yeah. Remember, you got to kind of drag the rod and let it start arcing, and once it starts arcing, start welding. Okay, but you. Here's too much of a gap. You ain't gonna weld that side. Just, just weld, here just the ends. And here. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Is there a trigger? No trigger. You just, when it makes contact, that's when it goes.
Stop. Here. You done it. You done all right. You got to develop that feel. It's a little bit tricky. Let's get you a new rod. Break that up. I gotta get a new battery. This one's junk. You gotta get a little bit, a little bit more aggressive. Huh? I don't have to um, move it back when it starts dragging. I no. can keep it right there. As soon as it starts arguing good, push the rod in. Okay. So you were holding it back too far. When I put my hand on it, you see it started burning in. Yeah. Alright, do the other side. good except you held the rod too far away but let's get the hammer chipping hammer and chip the flux off see how it looks yeah just hit it see how it chips off yeah sometimes it's handier to use this chip it off for a bit don't let me do it for you. Alright, let's have a gander. It's a little ugly, but it really ain't that bad. I don't hold. I think if we chip that, this hammer is about chipped away. It needs Flux don't come off very good. You didn't stick right there, but that will hold it. We're not looking for a race car chassis here. We're just looking for it not to break off. You want to chip the other side and see how those welds look? Yeah, that'll be much better than mine. Oh, come on. You had a little more experience. <laughs> did comment to me a little while ago. What'd you say? <laughs> she said the person who did these welds wasn't very good. He just vlogged on there. <laughs> I said that person was me. <laughs>
Watch your right front. You all right? Come on. Oh, stop. Stop. Yeah, come on, come on back, come on back. You're fine. Straighten them out a little bit, just a little bit. All right, good, come on back. did a fine job. Alright, now we just gotta figure out how to attach it. Yeah. That's all. She's mesmerized by the automation I have in my shop. Look at that. You know what else? What else? It turns itself off. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right, here's what we had did. We, well, I say we, but, you know, I got a bunch of, she, she helped me get some pipe. I welded a bunch of stuff on here, and I think it'll stay if we don't go 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Nerve-wracking. What's nerve-wracking? These contraptions you come up with. It'll be fine. Let's test it. We got a confused rooster out there. I mean, it's not like he thinks he's a hen, but well, now he won't do it. He was crowing and carrying on in the middle of the day. He was that confused. How about that? It stayed. Yeah, for now. You gonna drive it out? Where do you want me to put it? I don't know, just just beside the other one out there until we wheel the chassis back in. Sweep the floor and pick up and wheel the chassis back in. Off you go. This is the first time she gets to drive her 57 with LS power. <laughs> Where's the LS power? In the truck.
holler from drum. Now I'm going to clean up the floor, sweep the floor, and then we'll roll the chassis back in. It was fun watching you though. All right, we got the chassis in the shop. I think what we're gonna do is, probably don't need to, but you know, some of these wells are just plumb awful, really. Especially here in the back. You weren't just someone that did that. No, this was done back in 1957. Look at that. It's yeah. ugly. Anyway, we're going to brush up some of them welds. And then the other thing I think I'm going to do is... I need to make a little something right here, I think, for my shock mount. Just a little piece of metal. And... Then I'm going to go dig out a 5.3 because the engine's still at the machine shop. And I'm going to dig out the 4L80E transmission. And we're going to set it in the chassis and see how everything is starting to fit. I did mess up, though, when I mounted my master cylinder here. You know, it wasn't too smart to attach it to the motor mount. But that's what I had did, so I guess I'll have to change it. Now, that's the 4L80E I had my cousin, the transmission guru, build. But, you know, he don't get all jazzy with cleaning them. So, I guess I'll need to do that. And what we're doing out here is, and we're in the secret engine storage facility, and we're going to pull it, pluck that 5.3 out of there. Here in about 15 minutes when she gets the engine hoist up a couple of inches. See where that boy gets it now. Do you sometimes question my sanity? Sometimes. All right, why are you standing there holding that? Because you gave it to me. Mm. 
<laughs> but I'm questioning why are you putting the nice new oil pan on the old motor? Because we got to check and see if that fits. See, I don't have the correct engine. This engine over here is just my mock-up engine. Mm -hmm. This is the engine that was in the Suburban. Oh, by the way, let me show you something. <clears throat> this thing developed a rod knock. But if you look up here in the pickup, it's just full of something. What the heck is... I don't know what that is going on up in there. It's full of some kind of goo. So maybe... It wasn't her fault after all, and it was some goo in the engine. Because it seems like I remember I put a new oil pressure center on it, but the oil pressure never was that wonderful. And then one day she was, Barrr! and I think that wasn't long after she said, Dad, I raced a Mustang in the Suburban. And I told her not to never do that again. I don't know where she got that crap from. <laughs> Before we put the new pan on, we got to remove the old pickup. It's one bolt right there, and one right in the oil pump, I think. So she just said, "What's the safety feature if the hydraulics on the this thing quit working?" I didn't quite sound like that, but very nearly. And I said, "The ground. It'll stop falling whenever it hits the ground. It'll be as safe as can be." So we're setting the motor in and transmission. We're almost there. But the bolts in the cross member for the transmission mount are too small, so I gotta drill them out. That's what I gotta do right now. The GoPro died somewhere in the middle of all that, so I don't know how much you saw. But we put the motor in it and the transmission. Now we just need to square up our cross member and mount it permanently and and all and uh, see if the manifolds fit and a bunch of stuff but I'm gonna take a short break if that's okay what's that you say I said I guess this is why you mock everything up all right we've run into an issue here maybe I should have read the instructions but you know that's such a bother but I think I need to flip this side for side because here's our dis, the, our the discomfort. Limo. Our discomfort is this. The uh, center link is hitting the oil pan, so the motor's got to go back. That's a dilemma. Well, it's also a discomfort. Well, yeah, sure it is because now we got to put this down, push it back out. Or we could move the 46 out of the way and bring the cherry picker in that way. That's even more trouble, is it? Oh, wait a minute. The 46 runs, don't Yeah, if I mess around, hook up batteries and clean it out. <laughs> Either way, you slice it. That's <laughs> oh, right. All right. It's a workout. That's right. All right. Let me, uh, we might be able to just do it with a floor jack, though. We can. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, we can. We can but there it. goes my poor oil pan. It's fine. More pressure on my it's oil fine. pan. You know what the man said? Hmm. Well, he skipped garage. He said, it's made in China, so it's got to be good, right? Sure. Once again, I was exactly right. But you were wrong. What? Because this was upside down, and that's how you told me to put it on. <sighs> Well, I was exactly right after I figured out I was wrong. <laughs> so, I flipped and that over. If you were exactly right, you'd have put those on right. Those are on right. Well, you said they needed to be changed. No, I said this needed to be changed. I had to flip it over to move the motor back oh, a little bit. I thought bit. you meant these. No, no. Okay. I mean, give me some credit. Oh. Uh -huh. Golly! Credit where credit's due. Wrong time of the day. Alright, now the engine is sitting correctly, I think. So, we're going to pick him up a little bit and make sure. Alright, let's see what we got now. That's with the wheels straight. Oh, 
some reason it's not turning all the way left, but it ain't hitting nothing. Yeah, actually, I just didn't push hard enough. I'm being a big wussy. That's all the way, I think. Is it clear enough? Yeah, it's clear. Nice. Oh, caught the cord. I'm getting tired and a little bit hungry. Me too. And even though it's 65, she's still cold. It's getting chilly. Uh, I figured out that I was starting to get worried that the engine wasn't in the right place, but I also figured out that the steering, the wheels weren't turning. I debated on whether I was going to share this with you, but... Just so you know, it's 60. It's 60. 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. You'd never be able to hang with them freedom truckers up there in Canada. <laughs> Not unless I had enough fuel to keep the truck warm. Well, they're denying them that, apparently. Anyway, that's another subject. Um, so what I had figured out here was the tie rod end I had on this side is too long. Even though it lined up the wheels straight, I couldn't get full left turn. And that's because it was hitting the stop in the gear in the steering box. The geometry is just off. And it was very close to hitting the oil. And with that problem, it was coming real close to hitting the pan right here. But the steering the wheel wasn't all the way to the left yet. Which, being the quick thinker that I am, I decided I had an issue there. So, anyway, I did some studying here. And some... What are you laughing at? <laughs> quick thinker I am. I decided I had an issue here. <laughs> Guess if I was a little quicker thinker, I'd have figured it out the first time. That's right. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. So... I gotta get a shorter tie rod in for this side. I did have a quite a time trying to figure this stuff out. And I think I've bought five more tie rod ends than I need, but I'm gonna have to go back and figure out which one this one was and order it. That's what I need. One more of those. The confusion lies in the fact that it has a CPP steering box. But I'm getting tired and I'm getting hungry and I'm gonna have to Call it a day. I'm going to have to order some more batteries for this camera. I think this camera is like eight years old. And the batteries are going dead quicker and quicker. Yeah. Trouble is, you order them Chinese ones and they last about three days. And then they, you got to throw them away. Anyway, so that's another subject. That's another subject. There is one more thing I want to do before I get out of here. I want to see if the exhaust manifolds, stock manifolds, fit on this side. So that's what am I going to do. Look at the plugs that come out of that thing. They are or slap out. They're NGK iridiums. But look at that. Worn to a point right there. On the electrode. On a couple of them. And also look like. She's burning a bit of oil. Well it did have. 290,000 miles on it I think. So I guess it had a right to, right? Right, babe? That's right. You know, I told her it might be fun to throw some rings and bearings in that thing and throw, put it in that 66 with a turbo. You know, she likes racing a little bit. Yeah. In the 66, though? Yeah, it'd be fast. Maybe that's not a good idea. It appears to me that that manifold is not going to fit. And I recall Half-Ass Customs, that guy up there in Canada, who does a car every weekend, it seems like. And uh, <clears throat> I remember he put one in a 56, I think, and had to cut the manifold around the steering box. Now, ordinarily, I'd be down for that. But I've kind of... I don't considering for who it's for, I'm kind of going a little over the top. Like I'm getting the, the motors getting bored out, and I'm getting a bigger cam than the first one I bought, and it's got the forged pistons and some other stuff I ain't ready to talk about yet. But 
So I guess I'm going to be forced to buy some headers for this thing. Mm. Might as well are getting you again. Mm. I think the best ones I saw were on Speedway, which is what um, Dan from DD Speed Shop, another guy up there in Canada, and uh, that's what he used on his engine. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Think so. All right, that's enough of that. Want you want to ring the bell? Sure. She says she wants me to take her somewhere to eat. So, if you could, y'all, please hit the like button at least. Comment, subscribe, and if you're feeling like paying it uh, extravagant shipping costs, go to MrHeavyChevy.com and buy something. Yeah, we can't control the shipping costs. But I think she's threatening to do some metal art here soon. You may be able to buy some fresh metal art.